Hello, viewers. We welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to midday prayer on ACNN TV. We thank God for the grace that he has given us to be a part of this. May the Lord bless you as you watch in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us worship God and pray together. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, in access, it from eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, your great name we praise, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Heavenly Father, we bless and adore you. Thank you for whom you are. Thank you for your mercy that I knew every morning. Thank you for counting us worthy to be among the living souls. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that you have poured upon us. Lord, we return all glory, honor, and adoration to your name. Be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we have come to worship you this hour, to lift up your holy name, to bless you, to adore you, and to even hear your word, your word of life, your word of truth, your word of deliverance. Lord Jesus, we ask that as we look into your word this moment, that you will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for myself and all my viewers that the entrance of your word this moment we give us light. The entrance of your word, we give us understanding. The entrance of your word, we make us simple and better children in your hands. Thank you because you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. People of God, the theme for our meditation for this week of our midday prayer is God's love and mercy are new every morning. God's love and mercy are new every morning. And our test, our test is taken from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 24. Lamentations chapter 3. Verses 22 to 24. I read from the New King James Version. Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved people of God, I say we are looking at God's love and mercy are new every morning. And today we are going to look at the topic that says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. What is mercy? To start with, what does mercy mean? Mercy is the ability to pardon, forgive, or relent from causing harm to a person. When somebody is merciful, 
That person has the ability to cause harm. The person has the ability to revenge. However, the person decides to forgive. The person decides to pardon. The person decides to relent from the harm that they have the ability to cause. And that is the meaning of mercy. When you look at the Bible, mercy is used interchangeably with words like compassion, great love, great kindness, and forgiveness. In the Bible, the Bible uses words like this to describe the mercy of God, the mercy of God towards mankind, the mercy of God towards the creatures of God. And at this moment, it is important for us to know that one of the attributes of God is that God is merciful. The Lord that we serve is a merciful God. As believers, we know that God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. God is almighty. God is powerful. God is wonderful. At the same time, it is important that we know that the Lord God that we serve is a merciful God. And this is evident in many places in the Bible. In Exodus chapter 20, the Bible makes us to understand in verse 6 that God shows mercy to thousands, to those who love him and keep his commandments. God shows his mercies to thousands, to those who love him, and to those who keeps his commandments. And God also repeats this in Exodus chapter 34. In Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 to 7, God himself repeats this attribute of his. The Bible in Exodus 34, verse 6 says, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilt, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children, to the third and fourth generation. God is merciful. In fact, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 makes us to understand that God is rich in mercy because of his great love which he has loved us. God is rich in mercy. The Lord God that we serve is rich in mercy. His mercies are great. His mercies are and wonderful. So for our text today, in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22, the first part, we say through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. And that simply means that we are supposed to be consumed. If not for the lost mercy, it is the lost mercy that preserved us. It is the mercy of the Lord that saved us. It is the mercy of the Lord that saved us from destruction. So when the Bible says, through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Beloved, it simply means that when man sinned, we were guilty. We were guilty of death. We were guilty of sin. We were guilty of destruction. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says, for the sin, for the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. God told Abraham, I think I'm going to stop. Oh. Beloved, when we sinned unto God, we are all guilty of death. When man sinned, man became guilty of death. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, he says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is no other thing but death. And God is justified. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, God told Adam, He says, For in the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. God did not hide the consequence of sin to them. So when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, the judgment of God became justified because God told them that on the day that you partake of this tree, on the day that you partake of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you are going to die. But Satan tempted them. Satan deceived them that they would not die. Satan told them a big lie. He told Eve, he said, Eve, you are not going to die. He said, God knows that on the day that you take of this tree, you are going to become like God. Satan told them a lie. But when they partook of the tree, when they disobeyed God, when they disobeyed his commandments of the truth, death came. Beloved people of God, it is the same thing with you and me. The day we sinned, we became guilty of death. The day we sinned, we became guilty of God's anger. The day we sinned, in fact, the wages of sin is nothing but death. But that Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 is, tells us, through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. The summary of that Lamentation chapter 3 is that the people of God had sinned. The people of God had committed so much atrocity. They had done so many things against the Lord their God. They had committed idol worship. They had left their God. They have changed the glory of God for idols. And in all this, God was angry with them. And the prophet of God, Jeremiah, was complaining, was lamenting. But when he got to this verse 22 of Lamentations chapter 3, there was a change of story. He says, through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. Beloved people of God, do you know that it is the mercy of God that has kept you and me alive? We are not alive by our power. We are not alive because we are wise. We are not alive because we are better than another person. It is the mercy of God that has kept us. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible makes us to understand that all have sinned and have, short, have fallen short of the glory of God. All. And when the Bible says all have sinned, of the truth, all have sinned. When the Bible says everyone has sinned, God cannot lie. Of the truth, everyone has sinned. In John chapter 8, verses 1 to 12, we see the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrating this truth when he asked the accusers of the woman caught in adultery to cast the first stone. You know the story very well in John chapter 8. The people had brought a woman that was caught in adultery before the Lord. And they were asking him what was going to be his judgment. What is he going to do? This woman, it was not a matter of whether it was a, a, a speculation or it was a rumor. She was caught in the act. She was caught red-handed. And they brought her before the Lord for judgment. To so hear what the Lord is going to say. You know the story quite well. The Bible says, and Jesus began to write something on the floor. And they were asking him, say, Master, what do you have to say? This woman was caught in adultery. The Bible says, and Jesus raised his head. Then he told the accusers, say, let anyone that is not without sin among you 
cast the first stone. Let anyone that is not without sin among you cast the first stone. And you know the story? There was no one to cast a stone. Everybody left. Everybody left. Every of his accuser left. Beloved people of God, I'd like you to know that your accusers are not without sins. Are there people accusing you? In fact, the greatest accuser of the brethren, who is Satan himself, is not without sin. The Bible said the accuser of brethren has been cast down. He said, woe unto us, because the devil, the accuser of the brethren, has been cast out of the ground. The devil himself is a sinner. And he is accusing because he knows that he had sinned. But through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. The only thing that saved that woman on that bad day was the lost mercy. It was not the mercy of man. It was not the mercy of human being. But it was the mercy of God. Beloved people of God, God is rich in mercy. According to that, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. God is rich in mercy. Mercy is the gift of God. That Romans chapter 6, verse 23 tells us, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mercy is what we receive from God. Mercy is not for man. In fact, the mercy of God is not as, as men show mercy. We know men can show mercy. Men can forgive. In fact, the Bible asks us to be merciful because our God is merciful. But it is not as God shows mercy to man. So, this moment, I'd like you to invite you to God's mercy. Today is an invitation to the mercy of God. Today is an invitation to the love of God. Today is an invitation to the great mercy, the great kindness, the great pardon that is in God. Because when we sinned, we deserved to die. When we sinned, we deserve to go to that cross that Jesus Christ went to. When we sinned, we deserved the consequences of sin, which is physical death and spiritual death. Death in the physical, death in the spiritual realm, death in hell and destruction. But Jesus Christ rescued us from all of this. So, people of God, I'd like you to know that the mercy of God is available for you. The mercy of God is available for me only if you can come to him. Therefore, I'd like to invite you to the mercy of God. One of the hymns of our church, the Church of Nigeria Hymna, number 431, says, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep on the erring one. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus we save. Let us pray. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep on the erring one, lift up the falling, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus we save. 
Can you begin to talk to God, people of God? Ask God to have mercy on you. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you are merciful. It is through your love and mercy that we are not consumed. We ask for your mercy at this hour. Mercy upon our lives. Mercy upon our sins. The collect of our church makes us to understand that you don't eat that that you have made. You ate nothing that you have made. Lord, we have come to you. Please have mercy on us. Show us your mercy. As many that are asking you for mercy, your word says, whoever comes to you, you will by no means cast away. Lord, receive us in your mercy. Show us your mercy afresh. Let your mercy be available unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. At this hour, we remember the diocese of Bauchi, Olu, and Ijeshanot of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. We ask that you pour your grace upon your church. We pray for all the bishops, the clergy, and the laity of these dioceses, that your hand will rest upon them for good, that the glory of the Lord will shine upon them. Lord, we have come, Lord, as we wait on you in this season. Lord, reveal yourself to us in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that are asking you, crying for your mercy, Lord, let your dew and rain of mercy come upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, viewers. We shall see you next time on this same station. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.